Hi everyone, and welcome back to Gina's Food Court. If you saw my last video on creme brulee, you may have noticed that I recently moved into a new apartment. If you haven't seen my last video, then you really need to get your priorities straight. I mean, that video came out like five months ago. You better subscribe and turn on notifications before you miss another one. My new place is very similar to my old one with a few upgrades, but instead of giving you a full tour, like I did when I moved into my first apartment in that Romer Top Bread video. Oh, you didn't watch that one either. Cool, cool, cool. No, 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 it's fine, it's fine. Instead, I'm gonna tell you about a very exciting trip I went on a few months ago. The week of my birthday, back in June, my brother and I took a very spontaneous trip to Italy and booked a bunch of day trips and activities perfect for a couple of foodies. My favorite thing we did in Italy was a cooking class where we learned how to make pasta from scratch, which is way easier than I thought. And today, I'm gonna show you how to make it Italian style. But before we jump into the recipe, I'm gonna show you what we did on the trip and some of the delicious food we ate. If you're not too interested in hearing about the trip and want to get straight to the recipe, go ahead and skip to this time in the video. After spending nearly 24 hours in airports and on planes, Ben and I finally landed in Naples. With the help of several patient locals, we made our way to the car rental company to pick up the Citroen. Made almost entirely of plastic and maxing out at 30 miles per hour, the Citroen would be our trusty steed throughout the trip. Our first item on the agenda was a tour of Pompeii, the ancient city that was destroyed by an eruption of Mount Vesuvius. Ben and I didn't buy tickets for a guided tour, but we didn't want to walk around aimlessly at the risk of missing something really cool. So we stepped in and joined a group of South African students studying abroad. Our tour guide was this wonderful lady holding a closed umbrella, which she held for the duration of the tour. This stray dog had the same idea as us and hitchhiked with the group for a couple of hours. The city was gorgeous and rich with history. It was also riddled with brothels, and we kept seeing this symbol everywhere, which apparently stands for prosperity. Once the tour was over, we hit up the gift shop and started driving to our Airbnb in Sorrento. We chose to stay in Sorrento because it's where our great grandparents are from, and we really lucked out on the Airbnb. Our hosts were so kind and the living room overlooked this gorgeous patio we had all to ourselves. After our hectic day of traveling, Ben and I had really worked up an appetite, so we decided to walk down to a lunch bar down the street from our Airbnb. This place actually opened up the day before we got there, and we got to meet the owner, Enrico. Despite Ben and my best efforts to learn some Italian on Babbel before the trip, we had no shot at reading the menu. So Enrico took a stab at what we might want to drink and totally nailed it. He brought a fruity drink for me and something brown with a single ice cube for Ben. For the main entrees, we got an open-faced salmon avocado sandwich, a caprese sandwich, and what can only be described as the most authentic charcuterie board to have ever existed. I don't know what kind of spread was in that tiny bowl, but it was my jam. Of course, we couldn't leave without getting some ice cream desserts, which did not disappoint either. We ended the night by picking up some lemoncello and doing some shots before heading to bed to prepare for day two. After sleeping in a little bit, Ben and I drove to Positano, a gorgeous neighboring town where we planned to spend the day shopping and checking out the beach. First, we stopped for a little breakfast at an outdoor cafe called La Zagara. I was so excited to try Italian pizza and was honestly underwhelmed. This was probably the worst meal we had in Italy. I mean, look at this. Where's the sauce? If it wasn't for this bomb ass cappuccino, we probably would ask for a refund. We light out on the beach for a couple hours and definitely got some sunburn. We decided to cool off with some gelato, which definitely made up for the mediocre pizza. Now we were ready to explore the town. This was honestly my favorite area in Italy. 
It was filled with so many cute clothing shops and stands where local artists sold their work. Before we knew it, it was time to head to downtown Sorrento for our street food tour. We met up with our guide, Ronaldo, who took us through the town, explaining the history of popular restaurants and historical landmarks. We got to sample some authentic Italian coffee. I got mine with some cream, but since dairy threatens Ben's masculinity, he took his black. Ronaldo walked us through some ancient cathedrals and even gave us a private tour of an upcoming restaurant. The restaurant was built entirely within a lemon grove. We continued our way through the downtown streets and got gelato for the second time that day. Totally worth it. The final stop on the tour was a family-owned shop where we sampled cookies, truffles, and every alcohol under the sun. We tried lemoncello, meloncello, pistachio cello, and even a black licorice flavor, which really shouldn't be a thing. Once the tour was over, Ronaldo walked us back to our meeting spot and we bid him farewell. If you're ever in Sorrento, I would 100% recommend this tour. Seeing the town from a local's eyes was incredible. We ended the night with dinner at a restaurant that Ronaldo recommended in the Fishing Village district of Sorrento. We got delicious mushroom pasta and enjoyed some live music at the outdoor cafe. The next morning was rough for Ben and I. Our sunburns made it hard to exist without crying and Ben was ready to back out of the boat tour we had planned for the day. Luckily, we found these sun hats in the Airbnb and I guilted him into going. Once we found the meeting point, Ben went into a cafe to get us coffee with cream, but instead came back with coffee ice cream. But you know what? I wasn't even mad about it. Once it was time to depart, we got our seats on the boat and made our way to the island of Capri. We then all piled into a crammed bus that drove us to the downtown area. Capri was gorgeous, filled with cobblestone streets, artisan craftsmen, and lots of interesting shops, including this cooking store that I literally could have spent my entire life savings in. We stopped for some lunch at a fancy restaurant and got a ravioli appetizer, which was delicious. I got roasted chicken with mashed potatoes and veggies, and Ben, of course, got steak. After lunch, we headed towards this landmark tower for a tour. I honestly couldn't even tell you the significance of the tower because the tour guide only spoke in Italian. But I made sure to leave a little shout out for Gina's Food Court in their guest signatures book. After doing some more exploring, we stumbled upon this beautiful hotel resort and ordered a couple drinks poolside. Okay, maybe a couple more than a couple. Before we knew it, it was time to get back on the boat for a guided tour around the island. This was honestly one of my favorite parts of the trip. The tour was stunning. We checked out the sea caves and these rock formations called grottos before making our way back to Sorrento. We stopped back at the cafe near the meeting point and got actual coffees with cream, and we began planning out our dinner plans. We decided on a restaurant within walking distance of our Airbnb that had this super cute patio overlooking the mountains. We kept our buzz going with some delicious cocktails and ordered what we thought was gonna be mozzarella sticks, but was actually eggplant parmesan. We asked the waiter to surprise us with the two best pasta dishes, and let me tell you, he did not disappoint. We also ordered a side of french fries and again, mozzarella sticks, but ended up with roasted potatoes and veal cutlets. But you know what? Overall, 10 out of 10. We ended the night with some shots of melon cello, which by the way, was our favorite type of cello and some champagne lemon cello mimosas. I promise we're not alcoholics. The next day of the trip was my favorite because it was my birthday and I got to pick out all of the activities without approval from Ben. So of course we started the day with a little photo shoot where Ben patiently took pictures of me until we got this one that I loved. Then I took some pictures of Ben who got a little creative with the poses. Then we drove up to Salerno to take a pottery class which was way harder than I thought. Here you can see me molding my vase, which is definitely not supposed to be wobbling that much. Eventually, the instructor essentially said, just let me do it because you're embarrassing yourself. 
In a second, you're gonna see a clip of me scolding Ben because he was wasting literally hours of my camera space with videos in the vertical orientation, which is the exact opposite orientation that I told him to use. Ben was definitely better at sculpting the vase than I was and didn't need nearly as much intervention. But in the end, I think we both had a lot more fun than we were expecting. We even got to paint some pre-made pottery and not that it's a contest, but I think I definitely beat Ben on this part. Now it was time to move on to the next activity, the authentic Italian cooking class led by the sassy chef Carmen. Ben and I learned how to make a zucchini parmesan appetizer, homemade pasta, which I'm gonna show you how to make later in this video, and a tiramisu dessert. The thing about this cooking class though is that it offered free Prosecco, as in all you can drink. And Ben and I can drink a lot. Between the two of us, we drank three whole bottles. Okay, maybe, maybe we are alcoholics. Once the class was over, we enjoyed our meals with the lovely people we shared the class with and heard their very different, very unique stories, which was by far my favorite part. After leaving the cooking school, this was the very last picture I took of the day. Ben and I were both extremely intoxicated and decided to stop at a cafe to get these cappuccinos. I then excused myself to the restroom, got sick, and Ben called us a taxi to go home. I took a nap, called lots of friends and family, and Ben even canceled his business call he had scheduled for the evening because we were both very much out of commission. Needless to say, my birthday was one for the books, with a very fun day and a very long night. The next day was our last day in Italy which meant we had to drive to Naples to get COVID tests, which wasn't very exciting. And I didn't get very much footage of it since we were both hungover and almost late to the appointment, which lasted twice as long as it should have because we forgot to bring our passports. But we were both negative and quickly made our way to El Buco, the best rated restaurant in Sorrento. This was my birthday present from Ben, lunch at a Michelin star restaurant. We started with some complimentary cocktails, an assortment of appetizers made from various types of vegetable purees, and a three-tiered bread box. We then sampled what tasted like very bougie crab rangoon before jumping into the entrees. We had a fried squid entree, a seafood risotto entree, which was actually still moving. Next was a bacon alfredo pasta and a sea bass dish, followed by all sorts of delicious desserts. I don't know if it was the sheer volume of food we ate, the fact that some of it was still moving, or the fact that we felt the need to drink another bottle of Prosecco. But after eating what was probably the highest quality food I'll ever eat, I got sick in what was probably the nicest bathroom I'll ever vomit in. That's right, it was day two of being 23, and I got sick for the second time in a public Italian restroom. And as you can see from my smile, it did not bring down my vibe. We spent the rest of the day shopping for souvenirs for our friends and family, and even stopped back at the lunch bar for some sandwiches, since my stomach was suddenly very empty and very hungry again. Before we knew it, it was time to get ready to hit the town for the evening. We decided to head back to my favorite spot in Positano to check out the nightlife scene. We visited all the popular outdoor bars and nightclubs and literally partied until 2 a.m. when we had to bring the Citroen back to the rental car company. Then we literally had to walk to the airport and spend the next 20 hours on planes flying back to home sweet home. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that little replay of my trip. I'm still mourning the fact that it's over, but I'm so excited to recreate the pasta from our cooking class. The amazing thing about this recipe is that you only need three ingredients, flour, egg, and salt. I'm also gonna show you how to make a simple sauce called agliolio. That is actually the first time I've ever said that correctly, and I promise you it will never happen again. The Italian phrase means oil and garlic, which are the main ingredients of, you know, Aglioli oily boy. Gosh darn it. Start by mounting one cup of flour and a pinch of salt on your working surface and clearing out a crater in the center. Go ahead and crack your eggs into that space and whisk until the yolk is broken and the egg is all, you know, yellow. Now we're gonna start mixing in the flour with our bare hands. 
No, 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 not those bare hands. Just, just like your regular hands. Some recipes call for olive oil, but in Italy, it's thought that the natural oils from your fingers add the perfect amount to the dough, which is kind of gross when you think about it. Once your flour is fully incorporated, we're going to continue kneading the dough and adding flour until we get the consistency we're looking for. What consistency are we looking for, you ask? That's a great question. I know that our cooking teacher described it, but I was about half a bottle of Prosecco deep at that point, and she was mostly speaking in Italian. Once the dough is starting to dry out to the point where it doesn't stick to the table when you roll it, but it still has some flexibility, you're golden. The name of the game now is rolling out the dough until it's so thin you can see through it. This is gonna take some patience and focus because you wanna make sure your thickness is uniform throughout the dough. Once your dough is nice and thin, you can start cutting it into strips to make the spaghetti. Chef Carmen showed us this really cool technique where you can roll it up and cut it about half a centimeter apart to get a uniform width. You can cut your spaghetti to whatever width you want and don't worry about making it perfect. It'll all taste the same in the end. Believe it or not, our pasta is now ready to cook. Go ahead and start boiling some salted water and toss in the pasta. It only needs to cook for about four minutes since it's already so soft. And for the love of Sorrento, do not strain out the pasta water because we're gonna need that to make the sauce. Speaking of sauce, let's get started on making our aglioli roli poli. Go ahead and add some cold olive oil to a pan and immediately toss in three cloves of chopped garlic and some chili flakes. The reason we want to add everything in together is because we want the garlic to cook slowly as the oil heats up. You do not want the garlic to get brown and crispy in this dish. If you think it's getting too hot before your pasta is ready, go ahead and add a little bit of pasta water to slow down the process. Once your pasta is al dente, go ahead and start transferring it over into the sauce, allowing it to continue cooking in the oil. Now we're gonna add in some of that starchy pasta water and vigorously mix it all together. This is what's gonna give the pasta that luxurious, creamy texture. We're gonna plate the pasta in this swirly motion to fluff it up and top it with some Parmesan cheese and parsley flakes. If you truly wanna make this recipe Italian style, you will need to finish an entire bottle of Prosecco while you're cooking and eating the dish. I'm sorry, I don't make the rules, I just follow them religiously. Thank you all so much for watching this episode. Please hit that subscribe button so I feel like at least some people care. Join me next time when I'll be making a Christmas recipe. Comment down below if you have any holiday-themed dishes you'd like me to try. Until then, arrivederci!